Cuban Cassius for IFL TV in association with MTK Global. We're at the headquarters of Frank Warren here. How are you, Frank, on this lovely Tuesday morning? I'm okay, my son. How are you? Yeah, all good. Good. Um, right, well, we'll start from the boxing over the weekend. Uh, I always ask you, did you watch it? Yes, I did. Yeah. What What did you make of the event as a whole? Well, I mean, it, no, I'm not going to change my mind what I said from the beginning. It was hardly a pay-per-view event, and it was hardly an event anybody should be paying for. It was a total mismatch. That's what it was. We all know that, and, and it's being con people being conned to say that it was a you know what you would call a world title, world title like that. You know, no one considers the IBO to be a serious title, do they? Let's be honest. And uh, all the stuff going down there, the, the, the view banks are the first father and son to win world titles together. I mean, I could make a fight for Steve Collins' kid tomorrow for the XYZ title, and they could, he could have the same thing. It's just rubbish. It's not, a, it's not what any knowledgeable boxing fan would consider to be a, a world title. And the fella fighting who fought for that title was 12-1, and one, and the fella he fought to win the title had lost his previous two fights. And I don't know any organisation, bona fide organisation, that lets people who've had coming off of two losses fight for a world title, which uh, Jill did in Australia, but enabled this guy to win. So it's not a world title fight, is it? It was it was a fight, and he should be ashamed of himself for peddling what he's peddling. The, the son I'm talking about, the old man, you know what he is. That's his meal ticket. He'll say anything, which is what he does. He quoted Barry Hearn, his mentor. I think it was in the Telegraph last week that the public are children, and. Uh, you need to tell them what they need to do. In other words, the public are mugs. So we'll tell them it's a world title fight and they'll buy it. And that's basically Harry, the contempt he has for the, the public. What did you make of uh, Eubank Jr.'s actual performance, Frank? It, look, he's, he's fit, he's strong, he's got a lot, he's got a lot of um, stamina, he throws lots of shots, he can't punch, he's not a big puncher. In his last three fights, I know, you know, and one of them was a tragic fight, but he never put the guys on the floor as such and to my knowledge, he didn't. Um, he's, not a, he's not a concussive puncher. He's not even a big puncher, but he's got a volume of punches. He's easy to hit himself, and he hasn't fought anybody yet who's hit back. The only person he's fought of any note is Billy Joe Saunders, who beat him. Other than that, he's not fought anybody of note, who I would consider of note. And he talks about it, and rattles on about it, and I think they're talking now about Daniel, uh, what's his name, uh, the, uh, Jacobs, who's... To my knowledge, he's fighting Golovkin, isn't he, on the 18th of March? We'll talk about that from April, so I don't know where they're coming out with that one. So that's a non-starter. And you look at it, it's uh, it's ridiculous, the whole thing. They don't, they don't want to fight anyone. What do they want to What do they want to knock their meal ticket off for? It's what his old man done many years ago. On that, you know, when he was on his world tour around South Africa, Wales, Scotland and England. He never, he never fought any significant fighters. He said, he never fought a... a his old man never fought a significant American fighter, anyone of note. Never fought any of the big guys back then. Had some great domestic fights, you know, very courageous. But it's the same thing. It's the same rubbish. They're peddling this rubbish again, and it's 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 ridiculous. He won't fight anybody. He don't want to fight anybody. If he did, he'd have signed the contracts to fight people. I want to talk about obviously in the post-fight press conference from the other day, your uh, reference to you uh, was made. Uh, quite a few times in that uh, post-fight pre press conference, excuse me, and al also during the week over various different things. Um, first of all, uh, Box Nation aired um, a triple Eubank defeat header, if you like, uh, the two de uh, defeats to Carl Thompson and uh, Joe Kawasaki and Junior's defeat to Saunders on Saturday. It was uh, sort of aired around the same time as uh, their ITV show, uh, can you just tell me the idea well, behind I'm, it? I don't, I'm not involved in the, in, in the program of Box Nation at all. That's down to the station manager. But the fact is, the Eubanks were topical that weekend, and I can see why he put Eubanks fights on. Why wouldn't you? They didn't show all the losses, did they? They only showed three of the losses. They didn't show Junior getting beat by Billy Joe Saunders. They did, I don't think they showed the two I thought that was the top. third one, wasn't it? Saunders, Eubank. Oh, did they? Yeah, that's the third one. They, yeah, so what did they show? What are the three they showed? Uh, Thompson. To what, to two Thompson losses? Uh, I don't know which Thompson fight well, it was, was actually. Losses, well, so there was which, two yeah, losses. Yeah, so I don't know which Thompson fight it was, actually, because I, yeah. I was at the show. Uh, Kawasaki. Three losses. And the Eubank uh, Saunders fight, yeah. Another loss. Did they show the Steve Collins loss? I think it was just those he three. He had six fights for me. I never, pr I never promoted... Uh, sorry, I never managed 
Chris Eubanks, he was managed by Barry Hearn, and the majority, most of his fights with Barry Hearn, he came to me when he was in serious financial difficulties, and I put him on, helped him out, put him on the fights, and he had six fights for me, two of those were purse bids that I'd won. I, I outbid Barry for the, uh, for the, uh, the, the fights, and he won one of those, which is a very debatable decision against Ray Close. The others, he all lost, he lost them all. And he's obviously his boys lost, so that's it. But if the station manager wants to put them on, they were much more, listen, I've got to tell you something, they were better opponents for the Eubanks than that Quinlan. And that, listen, I'm not knocking Quinlan, Quinlan, whatever his name is, he was a, he was, he had a big heart, the kid, he was strong, he was tough, he was limited. You know, he was a, he was a club fighter, that's all he is, he's a club fighter. I want, listen, I wasn't suggesting it was your idea, it's just I was asking you well, I'll tell you something, if, I wish I'd have thought of it, because if I'd have thought of it, I'd have done it. I'd have said cuss to my customers, to be Box Nation customers. Watch, a real, watch some real fights. Watch them, watch them when they're up against real opposition and see how they perform. Big L's, every time an L. Um, I believe that Chris Eubanks, in his uh, response to this in the press conference, was that uh, he was thanking you for, basically, for the publicity leading into Junior's fight, but, you know. Yeah, I yeah, see, I'm always helping him out. I've never stopped helping out. When he had those troubles years ago, who did he come to? Me. Who helped him out? Me. And I still do it for him. Um, another thing Chris Eubank Senior addressed in the press conference uh, was a kind of a warning to fighters about owning their own fight footage, Frank. Um, made reference to Nicola Adams, just to be aware of the situation that... Well, you know, they don't own their own footage. Well, can I just say something? You know, norm, first of all, a standard boxing border control promotional agreement. A promotional agreement. Fight goes to purse bids. Like the two fights, for example, I won the purse bids with his old man years ago. In those contracts, you bid for the fight, you buy all the rights. That's what you're buying them for. You know, when you put your purse bid in, you own the rights. Now... If you didn't own the rights, you'd bid less money for them. So you're buying the whole package and you're gambling on how much you can go and sell it for. That's what you do as a promoter. As regarding the rights, does Wayne Rooney, Rooney own the rights to Man United's football club who pays his wages? Because we're paying his wages. When they come and work for us, we're paying his wages. Does he own the rights? Does David Beckham own the rights to all the matches he played for, for England and, and Real Madrid and whatever? The answer is no. And it's a, it's a cheap shot by him. He got well paid on buyout fees for his rights. He negotiated them. He came to me and negotiated his deals. And I don't know what his deal is with Barry Owen. He managed him. I, d I never managed him. I promoted him. And, he ex and the deal what I did with him was the deal I did with him. And the two fights that I won purse bids was because I paid the most money for him. One of the fights I paid for he, uh, was double what his own promoter bid. So he had a real doubt to raise his with me. And I bailed him out, you know, and I bailed him out, and he's all for fighters' rights. I never ever promoted Michael Watson. I never ever promoted Michael Watson, and, you know, we helped, we helped, we run a, when he ran into difficulties with the boxing border control, we organised an evening for him, negotiated a deal for him with the border control so that he got his money and so forth, and the whole boxing community got together on that night, all the boxing community got together on that night to help him. All put our differences aside, got there to raise some money for Michael Watson. It was a fabulous evening. We all done what we had to do, except for one person, Chris Eubank. Did you clarify? Well, he was there, but he never paid. Talks okay. about it, what a, what a gentleman he is, but he never, ever paid. Everybody else did, he didn't. Do you know why that was? I don't know. Ask him. Next time you talk to him, ask him. The man who cares so much about boxers. I know we've we've spoken about this to death over the last sort of a couple of years, but the common ground there that people look to between yourself and and the Eubanks is, is this rematch we all want to see. Well, we've, we've negotiated terms twice. We've put the offer on the table twice. We agreed the terms. We sent the contracts to them as we negotiated. They never signed them. And Bill's got fed up. It cost Bill a fight last year. We, we, let, you know, we thought we had a deal done, and then they didn't sign it. Same as they'd done with Golovkin, same as they'd done with everybody. 
But you know what? I'm sick to death of talking about his old man. Because the old man, he's got a meal ticket in the sun. And the bottom line is, with the son, the son there is, you know, we keep calling him Junior. Was he 27 now? 28? Should be big enough to make his own decisions about who he's going to fight. Just stop conning the public and fight somebody. Fight somebody of note because you haven't yet. And it's not being disrespectful to, for the opponents that he has fought. It's, he's, he's disrespecting the public by keep conning them about the fights that he's having. And the stuff the weekend was a joke. He hit that fellow of anything. And anybody who knows anything about boxing, it's all very well seeing fighters win. What I do, what I, do I look for the weaknesses in boxers. That's what my job, as a manager and a promoter, and boxers that I look hold of after, and boxers that I bring through. That's why I've been the most successful manager in, in, of British boxing with fighters who I've brought through for their careers. And I always look for that, that edge, or what I think is their, is their flaw. That's why the senior had six fights for me and lost five of them, because I knew what it would take to beat him. I knew the type of fighter that would beat him and taking him at the right time. And as much as he's brave in the ring, Chris Eubank Senior, Senior could punch. The son does not have his son, does not have his old man's punch. He doesn't have it. Frank, what do you um, what do you think about when Chris Eubank Junior sends uh, a message to Billy Joe via uh, interviews and says that he need, Billy Joe needs to step away from you and come over to and make the fight on ITV. Well, good job they didn't this weekend. They got skint, weren't they? They wouldn't have got a ton of tanner out of it. Well, and it all collapsed, didn't it? So I'm glad he never done that. That would have been a nice move this weekend. People, first of all, people wouldn't have got to see it, and then the whole system collapsed, as far as I understand. Is that right or not? There was, yeah. I mean, they put there out was, a statement. There was, I think, ITV. Yeah. Put out a statement. Put a statement regarding it. Um, well, they said they're not going to charge anybody. The reason they couldn't charge anyone because no one got to see it. That's the only reason. It's a nice, there's a nice bit of PR that we're not going to charge you. Because, well, we, why should we charge you? You didn't see it. But um, the fact of the matter is, is you know, ITV is brilliant. What they're doing, they they put their toe in the water, and no doubt, and they're a ma massive organisation. I'm quite sure they'll come through and do what they've got to do. But um, I'm sick to death of hearing about what you have to do. We, at the moment, we're we're dealing with Bill. What's, what's happening with Bill? He's got a mandatory defence, and that's what we're working on at the moment. And then soon, and you will get an announcement quite soon as to what we're doing with Bill. Just the last question on this, Frank. Is that something you would uh, even consider if the, an offer came over from a formal offer it's, came over from? Bill a, has a mandatory defence yeah. in the story. That's what he's got: a defence against somebody who is ranked number one. <laughs> you know, not some twelve and one fighter. He's got a mandatory defence and he's got... A, what he's about in the future, though? Is it, is it, of course you, in the future, yeah. if, the, if anything stacks up. Bloody... Listen, I'm not against... You know, you make it sound like I, I don't want fighters to go and fight for someone else. That's never been the case. Like I've said, it always comes a chance where you put your money on the table. Listen, we, we, we're investors in boxing, in the business of boxing. We've invested £20 million over the last five years in Box Nation and... And you only got to look at our accounts, as Mr. Hearn frequently tells everybody, look how much money we've lost. We've lost that because it's been shareholders investing in the business. Massive investment. You know, means we're overpaying in some cases, but that's what we've done. We, we're investing, and, and, the, and now the fruits of our labour will, will benefit everybody that we're involved with, with the, the deal now we've done with BT. You know, I'm... I'm the ITV thing is is what it is, and if if that's the if that is the quality of what they're going to be selling people as main events, that ain't going to last too long. So they're going to have to step up their game, and I'm sure they will do, and uh, and not listen to Mr. Uh, Eubanks of all the rubbish. And by the way, I see another thing he said last week about he's coming for me. Well, he knows where I am. I'm here every day. I'm coming to my office. You want to see me? I'm bumping you in the West End every time I see you. You want to be my friend? What you tell the public, what, like I told you, he's a phony. That's what he is. The man's a phony. Eubank Senior says he wants a face-off with you. We'll do it. Let's sit him down. We're and do Eddie Hearn as well. But he, he well, I'll do it in a heartbeat. Can we, what are we going to do? A Mrs. Merton one where he sits there like, because he can't, he's dumbfounded and can't answer it. He ain't going to get time to stand in front of that mirror posing and, pra and practicing what he's going to say because he'll have to deal with someone who's going to actually talk to him. And we've seen how he responds to that on Mrs. Merton. You should watch it. If you haven't seen Chris Eubanks on Mrs. Burton, download it. It's hilarious. So you're up for that face-off? Of course I am. Face-off.
face. Sounds though. a bit co- confrontational. Yeah, well, I suppose we are. No, I, I, listen, being very serious about it, it's you know, it, 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 I just think it's a, I think it's a great shame that the that people actually, and, you know, thankfully there are some journalists out there who've actually said what it is, but there are some people out there who are actually writing this stuff about that fight the weekend, and I'm like. You know what is going on here? You know what 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 is this all about? This let's get it right here. You know, twelve and one the guy was. Let's talk about Billy Joe Sean this Frank. What is the situation regarding his mandatory as it currently it's states? So today's Tuesday the seventh. Just first so bids changed, have yeah. been put back for uh, until uh, next Monday, and that's when the first bids. This is for Ketsidi. Ketsidi, yeah. yeah, yeah, the Russian. So that is going to be Billy Joe's next fight, is looking like? what's been ordered by the WBO. Yeah. yeah. So, obviously, last or two weeks ago at the BT press conference, um, Billy Joe saw as yourself talk about um, a big fight for the summer. Is that yeah. still on track? Absolutely. Absolutely. But we won't... He's got to beat him. Got yeah, to we him won't learn him. about that until he's, after... He's got to get over the mandatory first, and then... Um, you lost the pass bid. Yeah, I was or a bit Huey disappointed Fury and that. Joseph Parker, but, you know, yeah. but we only had we had forty percent of the purse bid to play with, and they had sixty and had the champion, and we got done by two hundred thousand dollars. We just just lost it, but um, it's a great pay- payday for Huey. He's getting nearly a million quid, so um, you know, I think we've done well with him. We got him into that. We got him into a position where he become the mandatory challenger, and he, you know, and, and most purse bids are eighty twenty or. 75-25, we got a 60-40 split for him, so he's, he's done extremely well out of it. The proposed, obviously, place for that is Auckland in New Zealand on the yeah. 1st of April. Do you expect both those to be stay as it is? I don't know. I was reading somewhere. I haven't spoke to anybody. I was reading somewhere they were talking about Singapore, but I don't know at the moment. So Singapore? No I, look, it's well, a shorter flight anyway. Well, yeah. So. But um, I don't know where it's going to be. But uh, you know what? I think wherever it is, I, I think Huey's got a great chance. I think he's got a great chance wherever the fight takes place. You, he's a good fighter. He's well scored. He's come from, you know, he's had great preparation since. Was he? He was the world uh, junior amateur champion, wasn't he? And he's had great schooling. You know, working all the time with Tyson, who obviously become world champion, sparring with him, working with him, and also working with the, the sparring opponents that Tyson's had. So he's had real good. You know, all the way through, had some. I think he's had some great school, and, he's, and his dad's. A, I think his dad's a really good trainer, and uh, he, and Peter done a fantastic job with Tyson, and um, I'm quite sure that Yui has the tools to to win this fight, win this uh, title. The only thing he may have against him maybe is a little bit of exp- in, inexperience as such, but having said that, I think he's. I think you know, I think he goes into that fight, and I think it's a 50-50 fight. Look forward to it. Certainly hope uh, Huey can pull that off. Um, there's so much going on at the moment, isn't there? This, uh, it's good, isn't it? Yeah, it's good. Um, any updates on, obviously, um, Josh Warrington fighting Kiko Martinez? Yeah, yeah. That's a good fight for him. He's been out for a while. He had that injury and he's signed with us now, so we're going to be up there. I think that's a good fight, hopefully, you know, to get him back in the swing. Um, you know, Martinez got done by... Quig, I think, in a couple of rounds, but he's had yeah. some he's had some good wins, and I think you know you can get caught and so forth. But here come to fight and give him a fight, and uh, and that's a great show up there. We've got a good show. Tyron Nurse is on the card up there. Nick Rand's making a debut, um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Could be a great night in Leeds. And we're, what we're trying to do is build it up into a, uh, that we can go at Leeds United ground. You know, that's, that's the objective to put a nice big fight. Josh Warren's world title fight at Leeds. Yeah, we like to, we got in touch with Chris Sandigar the weekend to see if they wanted to make the Selby fight, so we're waiting for a, some response from him. Be a great fight, that. Would be, wouldn't um, you signing fighters left, right, and centre. There seems to be a new one announced every few days. Well, we signed quite a few fighters, but we've got you know we 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 know what we're what we're doing. We're obviously looking for, to the future, and we're looking to. Do what we I think we're quite good at doing, which is bringing through the, you know, the young talent, finding the stars of tomorrow. So we've got the platform to do it. In we've got Box Nation, we've got BT, we've got pay per view platforms. So we've got every we can deliver in every way, and we're our, we are our own bosses. When does the switch happen where B 
BT Sport customers can watch Box Nation. When does that go um, in effect? I think it's in, I can't hold me, I think it's in March, um, sometime in March. Obviously the 8th of April. Exciting times ahead. It is exciting times, mate. It is. All good stuff, you know, I'm looking forward to it. As always. Um, you actually buy the pay-per-views, Frank. You don't stream them, do you? Sorry, you don't stream the pay-per-views, do you? You buy them, do you? Do I buy them? Yeah. No, like when, like, say, the other day, did you actually... I can't remember one of the kids was there. They do it. I don't know. Did I just watched it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think it's great that you buy the pay-per-views. Well, I'm in the boxing business. I want well, to see what's going on. I the finger on the pulse, don't I? I'm not going, oh, I don't watch it. I'm stupid, son. I should watch it. But I did watch it. I mean, actually, we was around someone's house watching the thing. But, um, God, it was like someone nicked an hour of my life watching it. Thought well, I should know better at my age. Okay. Um, have you got anything else you want to add, Frank? No. Um, our team's not very, doing good, is it? He's got to go. He's got to go. Keep telling you how many years now I've been saying it. It's the same old every, every season. It's like it's a deja vu thing. Uh, every year it's you, you know thing. you're getting beat by Chelsea. He said this away. year. He said a couple of weeks ago. He's got it's the best squad, best te- best pl- t- squad of players. If they're the best squad and the best team players, he's not getting the best out of them, so he shouldn't be there. And, uh, you know, as much as uh, he's been a great servant for Arsenal, you know, the last you know, six, seven years, just nothing's happened. And the FA Cup's been a, sort of a lifeline for him. That was a competition that he didn't give two monkeys about at one time. And I just think that, you know, something needs to be done. It needs, it, it needs refreshing up. It needs renovating at Arsenal. They need a new manager. You know, Chelsea have had, what, eight or nine managers and they've won all these titles over the last 12, 15 years. So we should be... Could have had the same one for 21 years. Yeah, but he was, at the time, he was great what he did, but he's not moved with the times and we're, we're back to the same old story again. You know, terrible, the midfield, they just rolled over, didn't they? I mean, they rolled over big time. I don't get why Cockland just bring Hazard down. Any other day he does that. Well... Let him run through. Like you should thing. get on the board, at Arsenal, Frank. I've got enough on my plate at the moment. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm quite happy w- with what I'm doing, mate. That's somewhere I can go and moan. I pay for my tickets, so I'll moan. Like some of those fans who buy tickets to my shows, they can come over and moan about me. That's my moan. I'll get, I'll get my own back. Um, Frank, also uh, a great fight being added in May. Um, on Box Nation, Canelo and That's Chavez Jr. Fantastic fight, yeah. yeah. Fantastic fight. So it's funny, some people fancy Chavez Jr. I fancy Canelo, but there are a few people who fancy Jr. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of passion on the night. Mexican holiday, two Mexicans. Um, that'd, be, that'd be lively. Certainly. All right. Well, Frank, thank you very much for talking to uh, IFL TV. And uh, I know you've there's news from all angles being imminent this week, so yeah. we might have to catch up again. Press it tomorrow. T- tomorrow we're in Manchester and uh, Thursday we're in Leeds. No problem. Good. Thank you very much, Frank Warren. Sorry, Leicester. Leicester tomorrow. Leicester Thursday. Leicester Thursday. Yeah. Got a good announcement for our man, Mr. Rainford. Okay. Watch this space. We watch, shall. Watch I. FL. <laughs> the space. Thank you very much. Cheers.